In Venezuela's capital city of Caracas, a hungry mob recently broke into a zoo to eat a horse. One cause of the food crisis is government currency controls that make it very expensive to buy goods from other countries. But Venezuelans are bypassing these restrictions using the internet-based currency Bitcoin. And there are similar phenomena in neighboring countries. Bitcoin is catching on especially fast in Latin America because it gives individuals a way around protectionism and other destructive government policies. Here are three ways that Bitcoin is promoting economic freedom in Latin America. Bitcoin, it's an alternative to using government money. And I think that's a game changer. Rodrigo Souza is a U.S.-based entrepreneur who operates Sir Bitcoin, which is an online marketplace where Venezuelans buy and sell government-issued bolivars for bitcoins. Sir Bitcoin's monthly trade volume has tripled in the last year alone, as more and more Venezuelans have started using bitcoin. An advantage of bitcoin is that while the government regulates and restricts the flow of money in and out of the country through the banking system, Bitcoin circumvents the banks because it's an internet-based currency. It's not only government, nobody controls Bitcoin. And now a growing community of Venezuelans are using their Bitcoins to buy food from e-commerce sites like Amazon and Walmart.com. The packages are routed to one of a handful of Miami-based courier services and then shipped to Venezuela, where they're delivered to the homes of people trapped in this starving nation. When the iPhone 6 went on sale in Brazil two years ago, the price was so absurdly high that it became fodder for one of the country's most popular late night talk shows. E a primeira coisa que você pode fazer com o dinheiro do iPhone 6 no Brasil é pegar seu iPhone 5, ligar para uma mina, levar a mina para Miami, comer a mina em Miami, trazer dois iPhone 6. The explanation for this high price is that the country charges an import tariff on foreign goods that runs as high as 60%. Uh, the idea of the Brazil government is like, okay, so we're going to put a high tax on Apple, so Apple can come to Brazil, so we can generate jobs in Brazil. Pretty much it, it kills Brazil. But the money is collected through the traditional financial system. Today, a growing number of Brazilians are avoiding the import tax by purchasing products like iPhones with Bitcoin. This way, the government simply has no way of knowing how much Brazilians are spending buying goods from abroad. Bitcoin is also an effective tool for avoiding taxes when moving investment capital into Brazil. We actually work with some venture capital funds, some private individuals that are investors in Brazil and want to bring money to Brazil. Tiago Caesar is the founder and CEO of BitOne. The company helps clients get around a 27.5% foreign exchange tax when bringing money into the country by using Bitcoin. But circumventing protectionist tariffs isn't just for investors. Average Brazilians traveling abroad will find that they're automatically hit with a 6.38% levy every time they swipe a debit or credit card. Many have realized if they use a Bitcoin credit card from Zappo or ADV Cash, they can escape the tax altogether. It's not illegal because there are no regulations covering that subject in Brazil now. There is a gap. And when there is a gap, not saying that it is illegal, then it's not illegal, right? Starting a new business in Brazil takes about 14 times as long as it does in the United States. And in the 2016 Index of Economic Freedom, the country ranked a dismal 122nd. Brazilian entrepreneur Edelson Osario believes that Bitcoin can help solve this problem. Not the currency itself, but rather the database file, where transactions are recorded in the Bitcoin network. That database is known as the blockchain, and it's a computer file with a unique architecture that means it can never be altered or tampered with. Writing information to the blockchain is like inscribing a message in wet cement. This incorruptible file, enthusiasts believe, has the potential to fill the void left by Latin America's weak government institutions. For example, in Honduras, one company has explored moving land titles from ancient paper volumes to the Bitcoin blockchain, where citizens of the country can verify that they haven't been secretly altered. Osario has a similar vision for how the blockchain can provide the trust that's sometimes missing from Brazil's government institutions. A gente tem um governo que não é famoso pela sua idoneidade. Eu acho que então o potencial de uso do blockchain no Brasil é maior. Ele pode ajudar mais a população. 
specifically his idea is to use the blockchain to disrupt Brazil's notorious notary industry, which is a major source of red tape. The government requires that Brazilians go through a notary office to verify the authenticity of documents like birth certificates, contracts, and car titles with every business transaction. Osario's company offers a different method for verifying documents that eliminates the hassle. Called Original My, the website he built allows customers to upload encrypted representations of their important documents to the blockchain. Then, at any point in the future, it's possible to prove a document's authenticity by checking it against the original. And the hope is that this new system for establishing trust will improve the country's business climate. E o blockchain ele tem o poder de trazer para a sociedade mais transparência, trazer o poder de volta para as mãos da população e renovar todo esse cenário de política pública antiga.